Hi everybody and welcome back to Dragon Eye Creations. If you're new here, my name is Laurel and I love to create. And if you're like me, you'll know that creating does seem to cause a lot of mess at times. Our craft rooms can get a little chaotic. So I decided to start the year off right this year by just going in and totally organizing and cleaning my craft room so that I can get a nice start and hopefully be able to be here with you guys more and not be playing catch up so much like last year. So my first thing I did was actually move my whole backdrop downstairs here and it's working pretty good. It gave me a lot more space in my craft room. My husband's nice enough to share this space with me. This is his band practice area. So thanks to him for letting me share with him. So now we're going to go upstairs and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I got my craft room organized. It's what works for me. I use stuff just from around home so it was really cost effective as well which is nice. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that and how we can get the next year started off right. So let's go on upstairs and take a look at that craft room. Okay, so come on into my tiny little space. I've got it organized though, so it works good for me. Stuff up against every wall, as you can see, we, we will start over here in our corner. Okay, so we're gonna start in my happy corner. I love this corner. This is the fabric corner. I love my fabrics. I don't know why this is just something that makes me happy. Uh, I did start organizing them uh, this way in the closet organizers about a year ago. I had this pink one here downstairs that I brought upstairs and it worked great. So then as my collection of fabrics grew, I started getting more of these different organizers. Like this one that is called a shoe organizer. I know that, remember that one? I think this is probably a shoe organizer as well. I got this one um, at a garage sale actually. So like I said, these are like a really inexpensive way that you can store your fabrics in a way that you can still see them all. So they're accessible, you know what you have. I really like that so you're not having to pull everything out to take a look. When it comes to my fabrics, I know that's one something I get asked a lot is where do I get my fabric? Uh, the minky fabric especially is what I get asked. Minky is this, this really soft, like you can see I get it, most of it is in like these long pieces like this. There are some that are in bigger chunks a little bit, but most of them are fairly small. They are um, minky scraps is what they are from a local lady who makes some minky blankets. But I have looked on Google, and if you look on Google, you can find a lot of places that will sell you the minky scraps online. So you can find that, and scraps work great. They're not very big chunks, but for making gnomes, it's really, it, they're big enough for that, for sure. The ones I get, so hopefully wherever you get them from, they will be, because I, I usually, you don't need very much for making gnomes, as you'd probably know. So I, that's where I get my minky from. Anyways, uh, other stuff really I get all over the place. Like it's really random. I get like these one, this one here is like a baby blanket that I got from Dollarama. It had like the fuzzy white stuff on the back. So I take that off and then you know, basically you're getting two chunks of fabric for $4. It works pretty good. Or these ones here are some plush blankets that I got from Walmart. Uh, this one here, you can see they are a 50 by 60 soft plush throw. And they work great. There's like, you get a pretty big chunk of fabric for under $8. So again, it's a pretty good way to get some nice soft fabric. Also, I have a lot of this fleece. You can see these big chunks of fleece. These ones here I get from Fabricville. I can buy, you can buy the uh, remnant bundles from Fabricville. You get, you don't you never know what you're gonna get. It's a surprise. I, I really like it. It's exciting for me. I, I find it sounds like Christmas morning. It's like, woo, what am I gonna get in this one package? Cause I usually, I get the fleece bundles and I have bought also the faux fur bundles and I haven't been disappointed yet. I have to say like, there are always some beautiful, great fabrics in there. The faux fur I do find is usually, um, a little too short that you can't use it for your known beards, but it works great for trims and such. Like it's just beautiful fabrics. Uh, I am collecting a lot of peach, it looks like though, so you don't get choices on colors. This here also was a plush blanket from Walmart. It's like a thicker, bigger one though. This was actually the back of it and this was the front. So you get two big pieces of fabric. That one I did pay a little bit more for, but you got, like I said, you get two big pieces of fabric. With the fleece bundles, the only complaint I would have is sometimes you get a chunk of fabric that has a really large print that doesn't work good for gnomes, like this one here with the cars. Like it's still awesome fabric. I love it. I just have to figure out what else I'm going to do with it because I am going to do something with it. I just don't know what. That's how I feel about most stuff in this room. <laughs> so I, until I figure it out, I'm just going to roll it up and stuff it back in there. And one day I will make something with it. So anyways, that is pretty much 
fabrics. I've got some seasonal stuff, some plaids. All my Christmas ones are down there. So it's a great way to keep it all organized. If you do organize it this way, though, I do recommend making sure you have a really strong curtain rod because there's a lot of weight on this. My husband did install this one. It's really solid and thick and it works great. So make sure you do that if you decide to use that method. Next over here is my faux fur and I do have some smaller print cottons and smaller print fleeces that I keep on this shelf as well. I would love to be able to keep it all in this method but unfortunately I don't have the space for that so this is what I have to work with. It works okay. <laughs> these plastic shelves you can see you'll see I have a lot of these in this room. These I get from Walmart. You can get them at Canadian Tire as well. They come in different sizes. They work great. They're pretty sturdy for what they are. So with the faux fur, again, like this longer one here actually was from a, one of the faux fur remnant bundles that I got from Fabricville. So you can get, you do luck out and get some long ones one time, sometimes. This one is really long. I love this one. It's beautiful. And there was like a really big chunk there. So that was a really exciting find. Uh, also Walmart. This is where I get the white, this brown, there's some gray. They don't have them there often, but when they do have them, I try to buy them up. The only thing with these ones is they don't cut them very good on the end, so you do end up having to lose a little bit on the end because it's not cut nice. But they still work. It's a pretty good deal if you can find those at Walmart. I also buy, this is a bath mat from Dollarama. This is a full for throw cushion cover. I have some that I've bought just off Amazon. Uh, cushion cover. This was some leg warmers, this pink one. So I mean, really, again, your faux fur you can get in all kinds of places. I have one, this brown one here, that was actually a hat that was from a uh, thrift store that I found. So really just keep your eyes open and you can find your beard materials pretty much anywhere. Uh, again, my the, the cottons and the fleeces I keep here. These are the smaller prints. Uh, I really like these ones. I wish I, again, I wish I could see them better, but it is what it is. Also, when you're working with all this minky and faux fur, something you want to keep in your craft room is a lint roller. Oh my goodness, the lint that comes out of this room is just crazy. Bottom shelf, I keep my uh, polyfill for my hats and such and my gnomes. Also, we have just in here is just some random things. I have like pom-poms and um, feathers and that kind of thing down there. So just really random stuff. So that is my fabric corner. Oh, also on the top of my fabric, wall here for some reason but it, just because I want to have them beside me this is just a container with all of my noses and hands and that kind of thing that I've made previously out of polymer clay for my gnomes so I have tried to make it so around my whole desk here I'll show you my desk actually right now so around my desk is where I try to put all my gnome making supplies because that is what I use the most so just trying to keep it so it's more organized I have tried to make it center around me. <laughs> With my desk, this is a glass top desk that my husband actually bought me for a gift a couple years ago. I love this desk so much. It has worked great. I can get hot glue on there and it peels right off. I can get uh, acrylic paint and it washes right off. Just pretty much anything just because it's glass, which is really nice. The only thing is I have scratched it up and quite a bit too from using my knife or whatever. I have found a few ways, obviously, of scratching it. But other than that, it still works great. And I love it. It is an easel desk as well. So if I'm painting or whatever, I can also tip it up, which is awesome. It is also on wheels, which is great. So I can roll it around. And if you have a small space like this, if you can move things like that every once in a while, it's, it makes it very handy. We're just going to move that right over right now. And I'll bring you guys over into this corner here. In my corner, again, I have, uh, it's on wheels again. Well, in the very far corner, I have my garbage can. Again, fairly central to me. I need that. <laughs> and then on my, uh, this rolly organizer here, I keep my hot glue sticks. I do buy them in bulk, as you can see. These are from Amazon. And I use my hot glue gun, which is also from Amazon. I keep that all right on top because I use that a lot. This is all my paper cups and stuff that I use for making top hats and that kind of thing for gnomes. In here, I have all like hair foam rollers and that kind of thing for making arms or these little M&M containers, which I love for legs because you can fill them with sand. It gives them a nice weight. So all kinds of options there. So that's all my arms and leg stuff. Bottom one is all my booty making stuff. So I've got all the little plastic containers, little round pieces of all kinds. 
everything you need to make booties for your gnomes. And I keep that all on the, in the, uh, right beside me because those are used so regularly. Also in this corner, I keep all of my pool noodles, big and small. I also have a couple of these cardboard tubes. I don't know if you can see. These are really big, nice, thick, heavy duty ones. Like they're hard. My husband brought those home for me and I'm really excited because I'm going to be using those to make a large standing gnome. I'm pretty excited about that one. So watch for that one to come. I do want to just mention in this corner as well on the wall, I have my art. This is uh, mine and my husband's first paint night uh, pictures that we did. This is before we both realized we both actually even wanted to paint and like to do this kind of thing. So this kind of was the start of our creative journey. So I like to have those on my wall just as that's our insp my inspiration. That's when I first realized too my husband was creative, like that type of creative. I did not realize that. Like he's always been very musically creative and that kind of thing. But to see his artful side was awesome. So we really wanted to keep working together on that. So we did do a couple more paint nights. I'll show you some more paintings as we go. But that's why I keep those ones up there for me to see so I can see them whenever I need to. And then on my big tall shelf here, on the very top, which I cannot reach very well as you can see, I do keep things that I don't need as often. Uh, up here I do have seasonal things. I've got my Christmas ribbons. I've got, uh, I think right now I put my Easter stuff because I'm going to need, be needing that soon. I've got Valentine stuff up there as well. I kind of keep it the stuff that I'm going to be needing soon. Other than that, I do have more stuff stored downstairs, but my seasonal that's within a couple months I keep up here. Also just some random buckets and stuff that I use for different things. And also up here is my sewing machine. We won't talk about that. And one day I'm going to learn to use it, I swear. Next on this shelf, I have all of my ribbon. I don't know why I have so much ribbon. I, I really don't. I don't use it all that all. I do use it a little bit here and there. I've made a few wreaths. I do like making wreaths. Um, but I don't, I, I just like ribbon apparently. I have bought, a. I actually got a big bag at a garage sale. It's one of the reasons I have so much. But I also bought just here and there. I see ribbon I like and I buy it. Hoping I'll use it one day. So we have lots of ribbon anyway. So we're going to be trying to use that up as well. Down on this shelf, I have all of my flowers. There's some stickers here as well. And then this is all my flowers that I use for decorating my gnomes up with. This is the paper flowers I use more for their hats and stuff. Oh, this bin here has grown and grown and it keeps growing. And I have to probably find a way to condense it down or start making some gnomes. <laughs> this is all my accessories I have bought over time of things I have found thinking, oh, I could use that for a gnome. I could use that. So we've got lots of inspirational ideas and stuff in here of, for gnomes I want to make. So again, more ideas are coming, guys. Don't worry. We've got lots of gnomes coming. <laughs> Down on this shelf here, I have my pebbles and sand and that kind of thing that I use for weights for weighing down my gnomes for in their booties or legs or whatever. Uh, then I have my wooden skewers here. These aren't like your really thin, skinny wooden skewers. I should mention that these are like thicker. They're the square ones. I have them in shorter and longer. I like those ones better because they don't break as easy. In here, I have like styrofoam balls and of all sizes, all different kinds for whatever. I also have some styrofoam hoops for some reason. But mo the balls you can use for booties or tops of gnome heads or whatever. I've used, I use these for quite a few things. And then in this one here, I have all my wooden, something else I save. I know I save everything, like I said, but this, I do use a lot of these. But I use, it's all my little car cardboard spools from ribbons or whatever. Uh, Toilet papers, paper towel. Actually, like, not. I don't have any paper or toilet paper ones in here right now because I find they're a little thinner. But like, they're stiffer ones from different things. I keep all these wooden spools because I use them for so many things: for gnome legs, for gnome hats, for like all kinds of things. So I keep all of those. As you can see, they work great for many purposes. On my bottom shelf here, I keep a great big jug of glue for making paper mache. I've also got a lot of uh, diff different spray paints and stuff some few random things in there a few painting canvases down here as well i keep the bigger ones downstairs i like to keep the small ones up here though i can't keep everything up here or i would <laughs> i also have my wooden uh bases and things all these are just all wooden pieces like different types of just all kinds of wooden sizes i've got small i've got larger ones 
uh, for bases for your gnomes or whatever. Right next I have this organizer here. This one here, as you can see, I've had for a while. It is missing a drawer even. I have thrown a box in there to collect things. This one I use for a lot of random things. This has got my old phone. It's got some air fresheners, toothpicks, uh, coffee beans that I've used for crafting, all kinds of stuff I keep in here. Up here I have all my markers and pens and that kind of things, all different kinds. I just keep those in the bin up on top. Here is my socks and mittens that I use for making gnomes. Then we've got some styrofoam cones. I'm almost out of those. I need to get some more styrofoam cones. For in this tall one here on the top, in the top, I've this one again, I've used it so many times that I can't go anymore by what is written on here because I have changed it so many times. But in this top one, I do have my knives and scissors and tools and such. And then here is uh, some wires and pipe cleaners and that kind of thing. And here I just have random uh, wooden, my some small little wooden charms, some clay pieces I've made that I want to use for different projects, stuff like that I keep in that one. Here is all my little twinkle lights for all different like fairy houses or that kind of thing that I like to make as well. And this one here is different glues and tapes and all different kinds of stuff. I've got rubber cement, I've got glue dots, like everything, all different kinds of adhesives basically in this one. Here I have my corks, whoop, corks and uh, wooden beads for making ornaments and keychains and such, the little gnomey ones. In this bottom one is just all kinds of beads and stuff actually, there's a lot of beads in there. So I have all kinds of stuff in that one as well, it's kind of whatever. Okay, moving on over here on this wall here too. This is some more paint night paintings that me and my husband did. These were our next ones we did. We did a few other uh, paintings on our own in between, but this was our, our second paint night painting. So I like to keep those ones. It's a very different style than something either of us have, had done. So it was nice to keep those. Okay, and on my top shelf here on this shelf, um, I keep this one open a little bit for projects I'm working on. If a gnome is done and I need to keep it safe or whatever, tell, like, tell its owner picks him up or whatever, I keep him up here. So I like to keep this a little bit open. This dragon here I bought at a yard sale and I just figured he had to come home with me and he has some broken pieces and such. So I'm going to be fixing him up and repainting him and giving him a whole new look. So that'll be something fun to do soon too. And then this shelf here, uh, kind of, well, moving down over here, this is like, again, stuff I need to fix. This clay goblet lost a leaf house I need to put together. So there's a few different things there that just need fixing. In this little metal organizer here, I got this actually from my husband's garage. He was not using it oh, quite a while ago. I repurposed this for my crafting room. <laughs> and in this one, I just keep like all kinds of different, um, like this one, I've got my steampunk little metal charms. Uh, some little buttons and little bees and ladybugs, like things like that. All those just little pieces that I need somewhere to organize that I throw them in this little organizer. It's missing some drawers and stuff, but it works great for what I need. I have my magnets on here that I keep for making my gnome magnets as well. So all kinds of those little things I just keep there. On this shelf here is my wine glasses and goblets and cups that I've kept for doing my clay. Uh, goblets on like these kind of things. Uh, I make all kinds of those. I really enjoy making those. So I've collected and gathered quite a few glasses. So as you can see, I, I have lots. So I need to get busy on those as well. Also over here is uh, different cardboard pieces, tins, boxes, all kinds of things like that. Again, for doing clay fairy houses, uh, just decorative boxes, things like that. I keep all that kind of stuff there as well. And over here, again, I've got little tiny jars, all kinds of different sizes for doing fairy houses, mostly is what I use those for. I have a wonderful dear friend who saved me a whole bunch of these ones. I've got quite a collection of those. They're from yogurt that she saved from Costco, so she saves me all those. And they make great little fairy houses, so those are perfect. So again, collecting stuff from all over, garage sales, uh, thrift stores, all over the places where I get all this kind of stuff. The bottom shelf here is our bottle collection. There are all different shapes and sizes. We've tried to get some random ones. Uh, this is something me and my husband actually have been working on for a while collecting these because we would like to do some potion bottles and some bottle art and that's something that we've been wanting to do together so that'll be a collaboration video. So uh, his channel is actually Dark Matter Crafts. He does a lot of crafting himself. Wonderful crafter. 
So make sure you check out his channel as well. We will be doing a collaboration video for some potion bottles and bottle art and su such with all those. We've decided we definitely have enough now that we should get that done too. So there's something else that'll be coming up. And down here as well is just more random jars and stuff that I've kept for do using with clay and such. On my wall across from me, I have put other paintings of inspiration. This is like my the, what I see when I'm sitting at my desk. So this is kind of my inspiration wall. Uh, this is a painting I did from Watuco, Mexico when we went there. Uh, my husband did this painting from a trip we took to Banff. These are some, just some uh, fantasy art that we have done. That's our, my favorite. So these are my favorites of our fantasy art, I think. My husband did this one and I did that one. This was a off a YouTube paint video actually I saw, but I still really like that one. It's one of my favorites. So those are ones I keep across me so I can see those and just gives me in inspiration. And then down here under my paintings, I have um, my other shelf unit here that I've had for a while. That's when I got off one of those Edson garage sale sites. Um, you can put it in any way you want. It's one of those ones that it can be organized, I guess, in many different ways. So I, I've, I have organized in so many different ways that this one right now is working for me. So this is how we have it right now. Uh, down here, I have some egg curtains, actually, that I have saved for making paper mache and stuff as well. That's why those are there. And then up here on the top corner, this is like my my spiritual things that just keep me grounded area. I've got my tarot cards and some crystals and that kind of thing over here, my sage. So I keep that all up here for days when I need that. I try to start my day actually up here with this stuff. And then I have all my painting supplies up here as well. This is uh, just all my paints and brushes here. This shelf here is my crafting blender. I use that actually for making my paper mache. I use that with the, the car uh, egg cartons and some hot water. Let me add some glue and some uh, poly uh, no, or uh, drywall compound. And we might make some pa paper mache with that. I'll have to show you guys that one again one day. Also here is just some random sticks. We got like popsicle sticks and that kind of thing. I just keep those down there because you never know. That's how uh, that's how crafters work, right? We keep it just because you never know. <laughs> down here is just some recording uh, equipment actually and my tissue paper bags, a few things down there. I have here my patterns that I have made. I don't do patterns very often as you guys know, but when I have made a few patterns, I keep them here. And my sketchbook for helping me get ideas and such, that kind of thing I keep on the shelf. Some more paints and some wooden pieces, yarn. These down here is like um, a lot of gnome hats that I've already made for gnomes that didn't work out or whatever. And so they're sitting there so I can one day use those up. <laughs> Got a lot of one days. Over here on the top shelf here, this here is uh, my first diorama. Well, my only diorama that I've ever made so far. My husband makes a lot of dioramas. He does beautiful work with dioramas. So the beginning of COVID, I actually made this one. It is a replica of our house that I did a futuristic COVID look to it. And I, I actually had a lot of fun with this one. I really liked it. I did get a lot of help from him. Again, Dark Matter Crafts, guys, check him out. Uh, next down, I have all of my silicone molds. I love silicone molds, as you can tell. Uh, these work great for clay. They work great for UV resin or your other, or regular resin, like all kinds of things. I use silicone molds for many things. So I have random, like all kinds of different, from skulls to dragons to flowers to teddy bears to mushrooms, like all kinds of things in there that I have in under in my silicone molds. And then down here, this is all my polymer clay stuff. I've got my rolling machine, my actual polymer clay, uh, some more tools and such over here that I use, cookie cutters and such. It's all my polymer clay stuff on those two shelves. And on the bottom shelf here is just random plastic containers that I save for making gnome bodies or whatever. It's more what ifs. You never know. Over here on this wall, this is a clay art or 3D art um, that I started doing after I started painting a little bit. And I really enjoy doing this. I use clay. I use some sand on this one. This one's also got the UV resin on it for the water. And it just makes everything kind of come to life. It's hard to tell in video probably. But I really enjoy doing the, the 3D art as well. Here's some more works in progress I have. This one is pretty much done other than... I feel it needs something else. I'm thinking of putting something sleeping here or maybe a log house or I haven't decided yet. 
Another one, this one I did not with clay though. This one was actually with the paper mache idea. Uh, it did turn out a little thicker than what I wanted, so I'm not quite sure what to do with that one yet. But both of them works in progress anyways. I'll get there. <laughs> and then just on this bottom shelf here, I have uh, resin, all my resin stuff. I do need to get more UV resin, as you can see, or big jugs of regular resin I, uh, is kept in my husband's office because he uses that a lot more than I do. So I just go steal that when I need it. <laughs> but I keep the UV resin in here usually. Um, I just ordered it, like I said. So this is all the different things I put in the resin. This is my light. Here I just have some big things that don't fit anywhere else and random. Some potato head, a potato head guy with all his pieces that I want to do a gnome one day, one day with. Some small glue sticks I use with my small glue gun, which I hardly ever use, but they're down there just in case. <laughs> well, there it is, guys. That's been my little crafting room. Hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough, and I hope it gives you some ideas on how to get your own little craft space organized. And I hope you can see, too, that it doesn't cost a lot. You can do it with really whatever you can find. So thanks so much, guys, for watching. I am really appreciative that you guys have stuck around with me this last year. I know it was a rough year, and I am so grateful that you're still here. I really want to get more videos out for you this year. Last year was a little rough. I didn't get as many out as I wanted to at all. So this next year, clean slate, right? Clean, organized slate. So we're going to start off next week with some a great idea for you guys, something brand new, a new Nomi idea. So make sure you check that out and lots of new Nomi ideas coming out this year, as long as, as well as some clay ideas and some other fun crafting ideas. So make sure you stick around and watch all those. And thank you guys so much again for watching and keep sending me the photos of the things you guys have created too. I love those so much and the comments, keep them coming. I love hearing from you guys. So until our next creation, love to all.